Good morning, saints of God. Morning. I want morning. to share with you a few announcements as we strive to begin our worship on this day. Announcements, um, I hope that you are looking at your e-newsletter. Um, I draw your attention to the Diocesan Absalom Jones service, which will be held on the 12th of February. This is going to be at St. Philip's Church in Harlem. My last update for that service is that they are looking to do uh, more of a hybrid service um, given um, our COVID reality. So this is where many of us would attend as well. Um, if it's hybrid, we can see it on YouTube or, or Zoom. I also draw your attention to an update on the COVID disease, COVID-19, as of January the 18th, 2022, there's much information printed in the update for your reading and information. There are some special dates highlighted in the update as well. I draw your attention in particular to the monthly musical concerts which will begin on February the 13th at 4 p.m. Um, organized by our music director and uh, um, organist, Anthony Lamort. Um, February the 13th, keep these dates in mind. And for those who are in leadership, on March the 19th, there is a special, special meeting for vestries clergy and their leaders of all of the Staten Island churches as we seek to build um, a unified front to develop uh, ministries that all of us can be engaged in. So these are important dates. If you look into your update, I advise you to go there and read that for yourself. And with respect to the service, I'm going to ask that all of us remain muted. And for the readings, um, I don't see Dr. Webb as yet. Is Dr. Webb there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, would you then be the sole voice to read the Gloria? After the collect to read the Gloria. Um, or diaconate in turn, David, will you then be the sole voice to recite the Nicene Creed? Uh, this is just for broadcast integrity um, as we try to get a better quality production for public consumption. So all of the voices will be muted the only voice will be unmuted will be Dr. Webb for the Gloria and, um, and uh, David for the Creed. Dr. Webb and David will do the responses with respect to the Psalm so that we have the Psalm read responsibly. Again, all of this is for uh, broadcast integrity. We're glad this morning to have um, Scout Troop 76 joining us for worship as part of their own spiritual um, assignment. And so they're joining us this morning, all dressed. You see our Scout leader, Charlotte, is there, and Matthew and the others are um, certainly are on in different segments of our Zoom screen. Our service will now begin in proper. Let us pray. Let us pray.
Lord of the church, who has given to thy servants a diversity of gifts, that they may share them with their brethren, grant us the generous heart to give, the humble heart to receive, that we, with all that love thee, may know the fullness of thy grace, that thy love may be perfected in us to the glory of thy name. Amen. Again, welcome to this uh, worship celebration on this third Sunday after the Epiphany. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom. Amen. Now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. A cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, 
to answer readily the call of our Savior Jesus Christ and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 First reading by Nick. Nick, on mute. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read, so they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, another, and and one one night night imparts imparts knowledge knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into the lands and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes comes forth forth like like a bridegroom out of this chamber. chamber. It rejoices rejoices. like a champion to run this course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. 
By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping, in keeping them, there's a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Dr. Webb. Roxanne. She's not there. Read. I can read it. I can read it. Okay. Uh, the epistle, a reading from the book of Corinthians. First Corinthians 12, 12, 31 and A. Read uh, just, just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our most respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues, all are apostles, are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise Lord, to you Lord Christ. Christ. pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be now and always acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer amen amen words from the gospel read those gospel the fourth chapter verses 14 through 21, the gospel of the day. I've entitled this sermon, The Spirit Within and the Spirit Upon. All the Spirit Upon and Within. Today we begin a long journey with the gospel of Luke. It is a gospel anchored in its message to the poor and marginalized. So in our passage today, Jesus, as he begins his earthly ministry after his rigorous temptations in the wilderness, speaks to this reality to those who gather to hear him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Yes, endowed with the spirit, he declared his manifesto for ministry. As we gather later 
to execute the business of our parish, a task that is canonically mandated for our existence as an Episcopal church, I pray that the same spirit which was upon Jesus will be upon us, within us, and radiate through us in what we say and do for the ongoing ministry in our community of faith and the community at large. Paul reminds us in our epistle reading that through our baptism, we were all made to drink of one spirit. His analogy of the human anatomy to prove his point of unity is fitting as we consider the growth and future of our parish. To this end, I pray that as we live into the mantra of making whole, that we will allow the spirit of Jesus within to heal all wounds, bind up the brokenhearted and set us free for big, bold, and courageous ministry. This will be the space I will invite us into in my state of the powers address because I believe the Spirit of the Lord is not only upon us, but within us, giving us guidance to navigate these challenging times, which call for bold, courageous, and transformative leadership. May it be so, in Jesus' name, as we are truly guided by the one spirit. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, prescribe the meaning and power now and for always. Amen. Amen.
us now affirm our faith by saying together the Nicene Creed. And I ask David to be the sole reciter of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 The prayers of the people, form three, is found on page 387 in your book of common prayer. And Dan and I will read it responsibly. David. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may tr truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will and all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And where we go, I lost it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That they may be delivered from their delivered distress. From their distress. I'm sorry. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I ask today that you pray for the New York City Police Department and the officer who gave his life and the other one who was struggling to, to, to continue life. Their family has a great loss. I also ask you to pray for the mother of the, general, the, or the person who shot that officer she too has lost a son and is mourning that loss. our bishop. Pray for Trevor, our rector. We also pray for the Right Reverend Catherine Roskin, Fired Bishop of Suffragan of New York, on the anniversary of her consecration 
as the first female bishop in New York. Let us now silently pray for all of those listed who've especially requested our prayers. We pray for the repose of the souls of Alan Sarasinger, Jeff Blocker, Laura Farr, mother of Etta Johnson, and for Dr. Olivia Cisse, mother of Father Simeon Johnson. Pray for all the front line and essential workers in our parish on Staten Island and the world. Pray for those who are suffering from any physical, mental, and or economic effects of the corona pandemic. We pray for the people of Tongo, Haiti, and Afghanistan. We pray for those who are suffering from the impacts of systemic racism and for those who are committed and working hard towards change, towards unity and equality for all of God's people. Continue to pray for Kirsten Swanson Basso and David Barr, now in the process as postulants for ordination. I guess thanks to God for the following individuals who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Christy Ann Zastasnik. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with every prayer on your servant as she begins the year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and granted be thy servants who now live by faith. May with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty. Even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's love share the peace one of virtual peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. I ask everyone to remain muted as I lead us now in the prayers taught to us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for well, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we bring our worship to a close, let us pray. Almighty God, who has given to us gifts differing according to the measure of thy grace, enable us each one, we beseech thee, to exercise the ministry which we have received of thee in the body of Christ with simplicity, diligence, and cheerfulness. 
that being bound together in brotherly affection and showing honor one to another, we may faithfully serve thy church and glorify thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. Amen. We will now transition to our annual meeting after the postlude. So the postlude will play as we transition to the annual meeting. Get your coffee, whatever you need to be part of our annual conversation.